Welcome to the first tutorials of Maya Masterclass. In today's video, we're going to discuss the Maya user interface. So when you open Maya for the first time, this is how it looks. And if yours looks a little bit different, just go to the top right hand corner of your screen and select Maya Classic from this drop down menu. So now that we're all on the same page, let's start the lesson. So the first thing we're going to discuss is the menu bar, which is at the top left hand corner of your screen. And the first item in the menu bar is your file menu. In this file menu, you can create a new scene, open scene, save scene, import, export, your standard options. And after that, you have your edit menu. Here you have your commands for undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, and delete. And after that, you have your create menu. From here, you can create polygons, lights, cameras. And after that, you have your select, modify, display, and windows menu. Now, these seven menus are the common menus in Maya. The menus that you see after that are directly related to the toolkit that you have selected down here. Right now we are on the modeling toolkit. That's why we are seeing these options. Uh, if we switch to let's say animation, the options up here change accordingly. And you can also create your custom toolkit. If you know what you want, you can create your own custom menu set. Now you might have noticed I skipped some of the menus in the menu bar. The reason is they require context and we will go through them further into the course. Right now we're going to go back to the modeling tool set and after the toolkit selection, we have our shortcuts bar. In the shortcuts bar, you can find shortcuts for creating a new scene, opening a scene, saving a scene, your undo and redo shortcuts. And after that, you have your selection shortcuts. This one lets you select by hierarchy and combinations. After that, you have selection by object type. And after that, you have selection by component type, which are your faces, vertexes and edges. And after that, you can see there is this little button. When you click on this button, it opens up a masking menu. It comes in really handy when you're working with a lot of different types of objects. For example, if you're working with joints and polygons and you just want to select the joints, you can turn off the polygon button up here and you will not be able to select any polygons. Uh, in the viewport we, we are going to hide that now and after that you have your snapping options this one snaps to grid this one snaps to curves and this one snaps to points you can also use keyboard shortcuts for this uh, for example x lets you snap to grid and when i press x you can notice the snapping option up here lights up uh, so if your objects are snapping and you haven't pressed any button you can check up here if the snapping is on or not and after that you have your symmetry option you can enable symmetry in any axis whether it be object or world and after that you have your rendering buttons these first three buttons are for rendering and previewing your render after that you have your render settings then you have your hyper shade in which you can create materials and after that you have your render layers and the light editor now on the right hand side of the screen you have these five buttons uh, when you click on the first button the channel box will appear in the channel box you can find information about the translation rotation and scale of the object and a few more options and below that you have your layer window here you can create layers and you can also click on this tab up here to minimize that tab but when you click on the tab you notice that the tab hasn't disappeared it it is right there at the edge of your screen so you can click on it again to make it viewable but if you turn the toggle off from up here the menu will disappear so if you're not seeing the channel box or any of the five options that i'm going to talk about up here you can just click on these buttons and they will appear and after that you have your tool settings button when you click on this button it will give you the settings for the tool that you're currently on right now we're on the selection tool so if we move on to the rotate tool it will give us the settings for the rotate tool and if you're having problems with your tools like uh, your translate tool your rotate tool and your uh, scale tool uh, you can just come to the tool setting and reset the tool that you're working with and it will usually fix the problem. So after the tool settings, you have your attribute editor. Now this is basically the properties of the object you have selected. Right now this is empty, but if you select any object in your scene, this will give you the properties of that scene and you can change it however you like. For example, if you have a light in your scene and you select it, here it will give you the options to change the color, change the intensity, I'm going to turn that off and and after that you have your human IK button. This is helpful when you're animating and rigging. And after that you have your modeling toolkit button. This comes in handy when you're modeling. This basically provides you basic functions when you're trying to model something. Now the third row that you can see up here is your shelves. This is basically another easier way for you to create and edit something. For example, right now we're on the poly modeling shelf. Here you can 
create a polygon sphere, a polygon cube, a polygon cylinder. You also have your shortcuts for commands like extract, mirror, etc. And there is a shelf for every function that you might need. For example, there is a shelf for curves, there is a shelf for sculpting, and you can also create a custom shelf. Uh, for example, let's go to the modify menu and, and we want the reset transformations option in our custom shelf. Just control shift and click on the option and it will appear on your custom shelf. Making a custom shelf can significantly increase the speed at which you work. For right now, I'm going to delete this. So let's move on. Now after that, you have your selection options right here. The first one is your normal selection tool. And after that, you have your lasso selection tool. A lot of people don't use this tool but it is really handy and it can also save you a lot of time uh, depending on the object you're trying to select and after that you have your paint selection you can select by painting now these three are your selection tools below those are your move tool your rotate tool and your scale tool and below this you, you can see this icon right here this icon shows us the last tool that we selected I selected the pencil curve tool so that's why it's showing us the last tool that we selected right here and below that we have our layout options the first one is your solo perspective option we are on that right now and below that you have your four window layout when you click on this it will give you the four window layout in which you will have your perspective view your top view your front view and your side view and you can also maximize any of these views by just hovering on top of them and pressing space and after that in this layout section we have your side by side option here it will give you side by side screen and the last one is your outliner in the outliner you can find all the objects lights and cameras and any object that you have created or that is in the scene you can find that in the outliner now below that we have our timeline now the timeline is controlled by this time slider you can shrink and expand the timeline but as you can see right now we only have 200 frames now the overall length of the timeline is determined by these boxes that are at the outside of the time slider if we change the value here from 200 to 500 you can see the time slider just shrank we can expand that now to 500 now the boxes that are just on the outside of the time slider control the length of the time slider if you want to input the values of the time slider manually you can uh, do that for example we can go to 1 to 100 and now our time slider is from frame 1 to frame 100 now after that you have your current frame right now we are on, we are on frame 1 that's why it's saying 1 if we go to frame 11 it will show frame 11 it will tell you what frame you are currently on and after that you have your standard playback options now below that we have our character set selection our animation layer selection our fps for the animation that we are creating right now and a button to turn on looping so when you press this button the animation that you will play will loop continuously and after that you have your auto keyframe button if you turn on this button any changes you make in your scene are going to be keyframed automatically and after that you have your preferences button if you hover on it, uh, you can notice on the bottom left hand side of the screen, it says animation preferences. But if you click on it, it will give you the preferences for everything. Here you can change the interface, the color management, the camera settings, the animation settings. I'm going to close that for right now. We are going to go through the settings in a future lesson and optimize Maya. And let's go back to our perspective window and below that we have our command line right here you can type commands in mel or you wanna use python you can also do that by just clicking on the mel icon right here and now you can write your commands in python and after that we have our script editor button when you click on it it will open the script editor now we are not going to go through the scripting side of my in this course let's close that for right now and here's your help section if you put your mouse over anything it will give you the information about that option so if you're confused about what stuff does what you can just look at the bottom of your screen and it will tell you uh, what's the purpose of that thing so that's it guys that's it for this video in the next video we are going to discuss the viewports uh, which is this thing that you will see in the middle 
all of these things all of these little options and how to set up a project properly so if you like this video subscribe to the channel leave a like leave a comment and i'll see you in the next video